Welcome to TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Hasledge. National Hispanic Heritage Month kicked off its annual celebration at City Hall. The month-long observance recognizes the contributions of Hispanics and Latinos in the United States. Reporter Enrique Carrera has more on the event that honored several people making a difference in the Cleveland community. Hispanic Heritage Month was celebrated with song and dance as the city honored seven people for their efforts in the community. Jose Feliciano, the chairman of the Hispanic Roundtable and a partner of a Cleveland law firm, was recognized. This is just a uh, reaffirmation of what many of us have known throughout the years of the importance of Hispanics in America across all phases of life, whether they're in the political area or the economic area, and so we finally now have the broader community recognizing it. It's also recognizing the incredible contributions that Hispanics have made in every facet of life, whether it's business or government or civic life. Another member of the Cleveland community being honored at the Hispanic Heritage Month kickoff was a Cleveland firefighter, Chief Angelo Cavillo. He became the first Hispanic fire chief for the department in more than 150 years. It's an honor and a pleasure and I'm so thankful. I also want to thank the Honorable Mayor Frank G. Jackson for choosing me to allow me to have a platform in this great city of Cleveland, Ohio. Chief Galvillo's father immigrated from Mexico to Cleveland and worked in the steel mills decades ago. Chief Galvillo has seen the Hispanic community grow in record numbers here in the CLE. And I believe with diversity and inclusion, and that's what our culture does, that we welcome everybody. I'm an optimist where I believe that this is a great country and that we're going to persevere and we're going to be stronger. By 2030, by 2030 one third of this nation will be Hispanic. And that's, that's, that's amazing. The keynote speaker for the kickoff event was Dr. Carlos Romero Marrero. He is a gastroenterologist at the Cleveland Clinic. His message to the audience is that even though Hispanics have made progress in the Cleveland community, there is more that needs to be done for the future. We need to understand that we cannot uh, change the things by ourselves and we need the collaboration of a lot of people to make things happen. So it, I, I'm just uh, very honored to, uh, to be uh, recognized, but uh, the main thing I wanted to, uh, to relay is to make sure that everyone gets involved to, to improve the, the quality of life of our young people and our Latino community. Mayor Frank Jackson says Cleveland's strong personality and character depends on its diversity and Hispanics have only added to this community. You can see that uh, the Hispanic community has its imprint on the city of Cleveland. It's really, when we look at Cleveland, we can't think of ourselves without the community. Hispanic Heritage Month runs from September 15th all the way through to October 15th. There will be events all month long to celebrate Hispanic heritage, so make sure you check them out. At City Hall, I'm Enrique Correa, TV20, we are Cleveland. Cleveland firefighter Brian Kenny was recently sworn in by Mayor Frank Jackson in his new role as an arson investigator for the Cleveland Division of Fire's Fire Investigation Unit. Chief of Fire Angelo Cavillo spoke highly of Fireman Kenny. His uh, hard work and, and diligence and professionalism is what we need in, in our fire division and also the fire investigation unit, and I'm sure he would do well. Uh, Brian also, too, worked with me at uh, Station 41 when I was Battalion uh, 5 commander. And uh, once again, a professional, always doing the job, working hard, giving 120 percent. A family man, too, always concerned about his wife and his kids and, and coaching and mentoring. And uh, he's, a, he's the type of person that we love to have in our division, and uh, I'm so thankful that he's here. Cleveland's West Park Fire Station number one on Lorraine Road welcomed their neighbors to visit their facility by hosting an open house. Cleveland Fire Chief Angelo Cavillo spoke to TV20 about the importance of reaching out to the community. This is a very important opportunity for us to connect with the community, our most valuable resource, our stakeholders, our people, the city of Cleveland, our neighborhoods. What we provided here was an ice cream social so that we can get the people out so we can educate them as far as what the fire division is doing and what our future plans are as far as providing not only fire safety, fire prevention, fire suppression, but also fire education as far as how to get out of a working fire, God forbid, if your family's trapped. 
Youngsters got the chance to check out an actual fire truck, learn about safety from Cleveland EMS, get fire safety tips from firefighters, and enjoy free ice cream and hot dogs. The biggest attraction was the fire safety house. The house simulates an actual house fire and helps kids understand what to do should they ever be in a situation like that. Cleveland Division of Fire Public Information Officer Larry Gray explains why the fire safety house is so important. We not only want children to experience uh, what it's like to be in a smoke environment, but it's important for parents to have an opportunity to experience what their children would go through if they were in a smoke environment. What we expect parents to do is to take this information home and to start having smoke alarm and practicing smoke drills with their family. There is one thing that Chief Cavillo wants everyone to understand about their neighborhood fire station. We're a safe house, so you know, if, if, a, if a child or somebody needs help, please come to the fire station. We're here for you. We're here for the people. And once again, they're our most valuable stakeholders, our most valuable resource, our people, the city of Cleveland. There was a celebration going on at East 22nd Street by Cuyahoga Community College, celebrating the opening of the campus district's new Main Street. We sent TV20 reporter Dan Monroe to the party, and he brings us this story. What do you do when the renovations on the Main Street that your neighborhood is finally complete? Well, you throw a party, of course. And that's exactly what Campus District did. Campus District is the area in Cleveland that contains CSU, Tri-C, St. Vincent Hospital, and a variety of other businesses and entertainment establishments. The party was to celebrate the conversion of East 22nd Street into a true Main Street, complete with sidewalks, benches, trees, and art. Bobby Reichtel, Executive Director for Campus District, Inc., couldn't be happier. We are celebrating our new north-south main street of East 22nd Street. We've got $4.2 million of new infrastructure thanks to federal funding that was matched by the city of Cleveland. So we are giving a big shout out today to Mayor Jackson and Councilwoman Cleveland. Speaking at the ceremony, Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson called this another example of Cleveland becoming a great city. But this is um, another example of how we invest in neighborhoods. You know, we want our neighborhoods to be neighborhoods of choice when people want to live, work, play, and do business. And whenever you want that, you have to make that neighborhood competitive and provide amenities to support that neighborhood. And that's what this street is. And that's what it, it helps us do. Ward 5 Councilwoman Phyllis Cleveland says East 22nd Street now brings a new way of connecting people. There's so much vitality and so much going on. You know, it, it was important to connect everybody. And I think you're going to bring even more people, more activity, more vitality to the neighborhood doing with the streetscape. It looks wonderful. It's walkable, which is a real key because a lot of people go from, from one end to another. And I think it'll enable us to attract more activities and and perhaps businesses to the area. The highlight of the new Main Street is the art. There's a stand-up mural spotlighting the famous, the significant, and the important landmarks of the city of Cleveland. There's also a mural spanning the East 22nd Street Bridge called A Bridge That Bridges. The mural was created by artist Brittany Quinn with a little help from the public. The other night when we were here, people literally drove by, parked their cars, and picked up a paintbrush. And they were good too! <laughs> <laughs> Everything turned out great and there was even a woman that stopped by. It was her daughter's first birthday. She had no idea what we were doing, but she said, I want to do this. At Campus District's East 22nd Street Celebration for TV20, I'm Dan Monroe. The 8th Annual Great Lake Erie Boat Float and Beach Cleanup was held at the Cleveland Metro Park's Lakefront Reservation at Edgewater Beach. The event featured creative homemade boats built from post-consumer recyclable materials. We are here for the 8th annual Great Lake Erie boat float. Our first boat float was in 2009. We've held it here at Edgewater Park every year. The, the goal of the boat float is to raise awareness about plastic pollution and the impact it has on our lake, on our own health, and on wildlife health. Under the guidelines, participants were able to put their own unique spin on the boat designs. At the end of the day, awards were given out to the most deserving teams. The winners of the Fastest Boat Award, Mike Serfanik and Sarah O'Keefe, represented Cleveland University Hospitals. This is our second year doing it together. Um, uh, first year going into the water. Um, 
we've, and we've just had fun doing it. We're a part of a, a green sustainability team at University Hospitals. Um, and we're all, between the sustainability department and uh, employees throughout the UH um, main campus, we get together and uh, talk about stuff like this. In addition to the boat float, there was the beach cleanup where community members helped to keep our city clean and green. African American males are dying at 10 times the rate of other men from preventable diseases. It's that kind of statistic that inspired the start of the National African American Wellness Walk and 5K. This event started 12 years ago in Columbus, Ohio, from my father, John Gregory. Black men are dying from preventable health diseases, and we don't have to. So he started to walk to increase the health awareness in African-American males. Um, so this is our first year in Cleveland, and what we have today, we have free health screens for men, where men can come down and get screened, they can get their blood pressure checked, they can get their prostate, they can get their cholesterol, and then we have a 5K walk, and we also have vendors from the community here today. Myself, I was putting off going to the doctor, uh, mainly taking care of counselmatic duties, and I almost died. I almost died of colon cancer two and a half, three years ago. This event means a lot to me to get out here to help, to give back to the community, and shine a light on health care inequality. Shine a light that African American males need to go to the doctor. African American men, not only just for themselves, but for their families and their friends and their loved ones. We need them to do that. And since the Lord, my Savior, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. blessed me and saved me to live to see another day from being, I was in phase three of colon cancer, I would do everything I can to help to get back. For more information, visit aawalk.org. There are many in the community that don't have the opportunity to own a book and others that don't know how to read. A local organization recognizes this issue and the importance of literacy. Here's Dan Monroe with more. Well, all the excitement's right here at Public Square where they're kicking off Book Week. Thanks to the Cleveland Foundation along with Annisfeld Wolf, they're offering a book swap. You can come in, bring a book, get a new book. And we are here to swap books because while reading is a solitary pleasure, it's amplified by sharing conversations around books. It's part of a civil society and uh, with Annisfield Wolf being 81 years old this year, we thought we'd expand the footprint to include people wandering through the most important public space in our city. It's a free trade, bring a book, swap a book. If you don't have a book, the Kids Book Bank, a new nonprofit here, has a stock of several hundred for people wandering through. And part of what we're doing is celebrating the people who bring books and literacy into our lives all around the year. Mitchell's Ice Cream is also here giving out free cups of ice cream to anyone who stops by, but there is a catch. If you have your library card, you get a free Mitchell's Ice Cream cone. If you don't have a library card, you can sign up with the county or the city. So it's a win-win. Me and my friend, we're just down, we just came down here to get out the house and have an awesome time and enjoy the beautiful scenery that they're having at Public Square today. Did you know about the book swap today? Um, yes, I actually got a book for, for my niece. She's eight years old, and I'm, I'm pretty sure she'll like the book. Besides all the books and ice cream, there was also an abundance of entertainment that included musical performances. A presentation by the distinguished gentleman of spoken word. and a story told by Ola Ramey Ann Oliver from the Cleveland Association of Black Storytellers. Oh, I didn't tell you. They didn't have cell phones or uh, computers or they didn't have television. So the people would gather and listen to the storyteller. That's how good it was in the village. Books, music, storytelling, free ice cream. I can't think of a better way to kick off Cleveland Book Week 
and right here at Public Square. For TV20, I'm Dan Monroe. When we return to TV20 News, learn how one local business is impacting our community and how another was honored for its family legacy. You don't want to miss your chance to vote in the 2016 election. Voter registration for the November 8th general election closes on October 11th. Register to vote or update changes to your name and or address prior to the deadline. If you have any questions, call 216-443-VOTE or visit 443vote.com. Make your voice heard and vote. Welcome back to TV20 News. For more than 50 years, thousands of men and women from around the Cleveland area have learned a valuable skill thanks to a barber college that has been training students in the art of hairstyling, cosmetology, and cutting hair. Reporter Enrique Carrera has more on an Ohio City barber college that has helped to shape and groom the city of Cleveland. The buzz of hair clippers at the Allstate Hairstyling and Barber College has been echoing through this building on Lorraine Avenue in Ohio City for decades. Allstate started in 1961. It was two doors away from where it is now. My father bought the business and this building in 1974 and moved it over here. And it's been here ever since. Uh, we've trained probably thousands of barbers in Cleveland. Just drive around Cleveland and go to different barber shops and you're going to see pretty much everybody has an Allstate graduate in there. The Allstate Barber College provides a 12-month program to full-time students to learn a trade in the hair and cosmetology business. Mike D'Amico says the college has helped to train people who had a difficult time finding jobs elsewhere and provided them with a valuable skill. You know, they, they go different places and they get turned down for whatever. And I like that. Bring them in, you know people who have problems and we work with them and we get them going you know and again they become a productive citizen and that's that makes you feel good it really does yeah and I'll line everything else up for you Derek Opperman is a disabled veteran who has served our country for more than eight years and the Allstate Barber School has given him the opportunity to pursue a new career with some of my disabilities I couldn't you know, pursue the career that I wanted to as a police officer. So talking with a VA counselor in the voc rehab program, um, barbering was one of the jobs that I could pursue as a career. Um, so working with the voc rehab at the VA and the GI Bill, they covered my tuition and provided this training for me at no cost to myself. If you've never been to the Allstate Hairstyling and Barber College, you've probably seen their work around Cleveland without even knowing it. Liz Rodriguez has been clipping and styling men's hair for more than 18 years. She opened a gentleman's barber shop in Tremont more than a decade ago. Rodriguez graduated from Allstate and now is her own boss. Only my own barber shop, I'm really blessed and thankful to them. Um, the teacher Joe, Joe has taught me a lot from owning a barber shop. He um, explained to me, you know, what we had to do to, in order to open a barber shop and how to treat people, how to treat customers. Um, I'm really grateful to them. The gentleman's barbershop has become a family business. Liz's daughter Ashley recently graduated from the barber college and is doing her own fades and shape ups. I'm just fortunate that I was able to go and attend there because also she went to Allstate and um, the same teachers that taught me were the same teachers that taught her when she went about 20 years ago. So it's pretty cool. Um, then, you know, learning from them, it was an easy transition coming here and beginning to learn from my mom. As you can see from this classroom of barbers in training, Allstate's influence on Cleveland will be felt for decades more to come. In Ohio City, Enrique Correa, TV20, we are Cleveland. Since 1958, Beckham's B&M Barbecue has been serving the Cleveland area the most delicious assortment of barbecue dishes available. Owner Gregory Beckham spoke to us about the family tradition that is still going strong today. My mom and dad started the business back in 1958 uh, on 79th and Huff. They had a location, and I, you know, they, my dad had a sauce recipe, and he loved to cook and created and went into business with my uncle, and they became B and M from Beckham and Mitchell, where it stood from. Uh, my uncle, my dad brought my uncle out, and it became B and M. He kept the name B and M Barbecue going. 
To celebrate Beckham's years of barbecue service and the opening of his new restaurant on Miles Road in North Randall, Beckham had a special meeting with Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson. The two talked about their favorite barbecue meals, and afterwards, Mayor Jackson presented Mr. Beckham with a proclamation. The mayor gave us, he gave me and my family a grand opening of the Beckhams being in barbecue, a proclamation for being in business for us since 1958 in our, all of our locations and everything. And we're really honored and proud of that, to, to be a part of Cleveland history. For more information on Beckham's B&M Barbecue, their locations, and how to reserve their food truck, visit their website at gotribs.net. In the meantime, Beckham says he will run the business with the same plan set up in 1958. Family. Still have my mom around, uh, helping me in the kitchen and encouraging me around, so that's a blessing, you know, so. We still, the family is still involved in the business, the kids and, and all of that. So, you know, it's, it's really been just a blessing. A section of Clarkwood Road was renamed in honor of a special lady who gave so much of her time to helping the city of Cleveland and its residents, Miss Priscilla Elizabeth Walton. Well, uh, Priscilla Walton, um, 91 year old lady, and she lived in the central community and served the central community for 60 or 70 years. Um, she worked for the City of Cleveland Department of Aging where she helped take care of seniors in our communities. Uh, she served as a precinct committee person, a community volunteer, somebody, whenever something needed to be done in the neighborhood, she was one of the first people uh, everyone looked to to say, what do we do? And she would say, hey, this is what you do and let's get started. Friends, family, and colleagues gathered at the Priscilla Elizabeth Walton Way street sign to celebrate and honor Miss Walton, who was also in attendance. Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson presented Miss Walton with a proclamation honoring her years of service to the community. Miss Walton has always been someone who has worked for the community. She's in the community, of the community, worked for the community, and you knew that if you had Miss Walton uh, doing whatever it was. Ward 5 Councilwoman Phyllis Cleveland then presented Miss Walton with a copy of the street sign with her name on it. Congratulations, Miss Walton. Meet Willie Williams. Mr. Williams was a longtime employee for the City of Cleveland and he is also the grandfather to an employee in the mayor's office. Today, Mr. Williams turned 90 and his family brought him to City Hall for a tour. Unbeknownst to Mr. Williams, however, was that Mayor Jackson was waiting to meet him, take some photos, and present him with a special proclamation, naming this day Willie R. Williams Day. Mr. Williams was beyond surprised. Hey, I think it was wonderful. It's something that I never would have expected at a time like this year. Being, being related to employment from 25 years ago of retirement, yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> with a whole lot of blessings and grace with me. Mr. Williams and Mayor Jackson spoke together for a bit, then his family came together for some photos. It's his family, says Williams, that gets all his love and thanks for making this a birthday to remember. My family, you know, most of them, both, most of them, which are God's grace, it's keeping us in the family realm, good religion, good personality, and our, uh, we have a joyful life of communicating together, and we always have good times with special events. But this is an amazing one here. Traditionally, Labor Day is a day of cookouts and family gatherings, celebrating the efforts of those in the workforce while marking the unofficial end of summer. It's also a day for parades, the biggest and best being the 11th Congressional District Community Caucus Labor Day Parade. For the past 45 years, the parade has marched down Kinsman Road, stopping at Luke Easter Park. The theme of this year's parade is Empowering Our People, with the Honorable Congresswoman Marsha L. Fudge serving as Grand Marshal. The parade entertained those positioned along the nearly two-mile parade route with a variety of floats, stylish cars, politicians, and local marching bands.
Once the nearly two hour parade ended, revelers walked over to Luke Easter Park to continue the celebration with a community festival. The festival had it all. Bounce houses for the kids, the ever popular water trailer from the Cleveland Division of Water, food trucks, exercise demonstrations, and an epic drumline battle. Thanks to the good weather, the 11th Congressional District Community Caucus Labor Day Parade and Festival drew crowds in the thousands. After 45 years, it's easy to see that this tradition will continue on for another 45, and then some. Cleveland City Councilman Terrell Pruitt once again hosted the annual Hot Fun Ward 1 Parade and Festival. The parade begins at John F. Kennedy High School and concludes at the festival in Karouche Park where people of all ages shop from local vendors, enjoy delicious food, and live music from talented local artists. The Cleveland City Planning Commission knows that food is a universal language that brings people together from all walks of life, so they invited Cleveland residents to join together to share their favorite dishes. Here's reporter Christian Patterson with more. I'm here at Riddall Green Partnership in Cleveland's Ward 5 neighborhood for the fifth annual Potluck in the Park. Part of the reason that we um, started doing this is really just as a way to bring everybody together from the east side to the west side. There's always been this divide between the east and the west side, and we said, you know, one way to do that is to bring people out. Everybody wants to come out over a meal, and people like entertainment. So we go to the east side, we go to the west side, we go both uh, to either side every, every year. People get familiar, and they like the event, so they're willing to come, and they come and they explore, and they find new places that they've never been before and don't, didn't realize, a lot of people didn't realize spaces like this existed on the east side. The Riddall Green Partnership is a jewel in the Kinsman neighborhood. Between breeding tilapia and growing fresh produce, they're very community oriented and fully support the initiatives like Potluck in the Park that helps bring a community together. It's very important that we find a way to interact with, with, with the people and the people have, have a way to kind of interact with, with those who kind of bring events to the neighborhood. This is a central neighborhood that has a very large disparity of life expectancy at 29 years between the people who live here and those who live eight miles away. So what ends up happening is that uh, people are left out of a lot of the, the loops where they can be have access to life, to taste and experience life. And this is the kind of event where there's plenty of good food here, plenty of good fun, a lot of local vendors, a lot of good people from around here to kind of mix, mingle and interact. And we're having a great time. Potluck in the Park is essentially a mini festival. In addition to the wonderful food, there were vendors with all sorts of goods, a spinning class for those who were interested, and live music performances from local artists. So we have food donations from several local restaurants in the city, and we also have people who just bring donations uh, for, of food. So, and of course it's a potluck, so everybody, you know, kind of, most of it is supposed to come from the community. So we have a lot, of, a lot of dishes that people made at home, their specialties that they wanted to highlight and show to the community, so they brought them out. And uh, you see we have a huge spread of food, so hopefully everybody's enjoying their meal. The Vital Neighborhoods group accomplished their goal of bringing a diverse group together from neighborhoods all over the city of Cleveland to help build a sense of community that transcends neighborhood boundaries. If you've never attended or heard of Potluck in the Park, here's what you're missing. Fun, festivities, stuff for everyone, the children to adults, and it's always music involved. Uh, with the Fresh Law, we just in and to, we wanted to um, bring in emergent artists, but there's always music, fun, and festivities for everyone, and a lot of different types of food. The fifth annual Potluck in the Park was a huge success. Residents from all over Cleveland came out to enjoy food, music, and an overall good time. For TV20, I'm Christian Patterson. We are Cleveland. And thanks for watching TV20 News. I'm Leah Haslidge. Up next, we're going to have Christian Patterson with the Inside Sports Report.